One of the reasons many scientists believe that the Earth is very old, on the order of billions of years old, is that there are certain radioactive decays that take a long, long time to occur. And we've studied these radio, we've been studying these radioactive decays for about a hundred years or so, and some of them are very, very slow. Now, if we look at certain kinds of rocks in the Earth, we see the radioactive isotopes and we see some of the things they make. And people use that to try and estimate the age of the rock. So, for example, uh, when lava flows from a volcano, it's a liquid, but it eventually cools and hardens into a kind of rock we call igneous rock. Now, this igneous rock has lots of chemicals in it, but two elements that you find in igneous rock are potassium and, and argon. Now, it turns out there are certain kinds of potassium that radioactively decays into argon, and the process is incredibly slow. If I look at this igneous rock today, I can see some potassium, I can see a, quite a bit of argon. And if I assume that while the lava was liquid and very, very hot, it drove all the argon that might have been in there away, then when the lava cooled, there should be no argon in it. So when I look at an igneous rock now, any argon that's in that igneous rock must have come from the radioactive decay of potassium. Well, since we know how long this takes, we can use the level of potassium and argon to estimate how long ago that igneous rock cooled and formed rock. And these, this is called potassium-argon dating, and it's a kind of radioactive dating. Now, it turns out that this potassium-argon dating can give you very, very ancient uh, answers for the age of the, of, the, of the lava, hundreds of millions of years old. And so because there are lava flows that have a certain amount of potassium and a certain amount of argon that indicate it must have taken hundreds of millions of years for that potassium to decay into argon, people think that that lava flow happened hundreds of millions of years ago. Now, that's a pretty good theory. Uh, after all, we think we know how fast this radioactive decay occurs. We think we can figure out that there wasn't any argon to begin with. So it makes sense that the level of argon and potassium now tells us how old the lava is. The problem is, whenever I actually know the age of the lava flow, the radioactive dating gives the wrong answer. So for example, sometimes lava flows happen and get recorded in history because they're important. And so uh, there are lava flows that history tells us occurred 500 years ago. However, the potassium argon date indicates that they happened 12 million years ago. Obviously, that's not right. And it turns out whenever we know the age of the lava flow, the potassium argon date doesn't work, doesn't match. So the only kind of lava flows that we can use to, uh, uh, to use potassium argon dating on our lava flows we don't know an age for. And if the potassium argon dating doesn't work for the lava flows we know the age of, what makes us think they work for the lava flows we don't know the age of? And every one of the radioactive dating proce uh, processes like this have some real problems, much like the potassium argon dating system. So for example, consider the carbon dating system. That's something a lot of people have heard about. Uh, we can measure the amount of radioactive carbon in an, a fossil or in a diamond or something like that to estimate its age. The problem is, based on what we know, carbon decays relatively quickly, at least as most of these radioisotopes go. It decays so quickly that anything that's over 100,000 years old shouldn't have any carbon-14 in it. And yet, we can look at diamonds, which... Everyone who believes in an old earth believes these diamonds are hundreds of millions of years old. We can find carbon-14 in those diamonds. Now, if those diamonds really are hundreds of millions of years old, the carbon date should be unreadable. We shouldn't find any carbon-14 in them. The fact that we do indicates there's obviously something about carbon-14 dating we really don't understand. Also, there are times where you can try and compare carbon-14 dating to another radioactive dating process. So, for example, when a lava flow encases some wood and doesn't completely burn it, you can date the wood with carbon-14 dating, you can date the lava flow with potassium-argon dating, and guess what? They never match. Usually the carbon date gives a very young age, 
and the potassium argon date gives a very old age. When I look at radioactive dating, I see an enormous amount of inconsistency between the different dating systems, and even within a dating system, inconsistency between known dates and those, that dating system. Because there's so much inconsistency, as a nuclear chemist, I simply don't think radioactive dating is reliable, so I think its value of trying to estimate age simply isn't very useful.